President Richer, Dr. Andres, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, dear class of 2012. Just 16 hours ago, yesterday night or this morning, after your great cabaret, which has been mentioned several times now, you were still dancing, laughing, and singing. Although I shouldn't call most of your performances singing, <laughs> we are in an opera hose after all. <laughs> and you were making fun of yourselves and everybody else. And now, here you are, elegant, proud, a little bit shy, some of you very serious, and quietly await awaiting the diploma for which you have been working during the past two or three years. In the past 16 hours, you have thus forcefully demonstrated the three unofficial core qualities of a Hurti student. You easily adapt to almost any kind of challenge. You don't take yourselves too seriously. And you don't need a lot of sleep. <laughs> you will need those qualities when leaving Hurti. Because policy life out there is very special. As we've tried to teach you during the past years, the policy world never behaves the world you would expect. And President Trichet referred to that. So you need to adapt easily to almost any kind of situation. And since this is the case, there is no reason to pretend you already know everything. So don't take yourselves too seriously. And, things, and since things never behave the way you thought, and you will find out how little you know about the actual challenge you will be facing, you will have to face sleepless nights to try to make sense of the public policy world. So life out there is very similar to your actual experience at Hertie. And, since we and so we sincerely hope we prepared you well. But before you will now get your degrees, I think I need to give you a health warning and a very important disclaimer. There is one issue about your careers in public policy that, that we haven't told you about thus far. So now, only a few minutes away from graduation, I think as your MPP director, and on behalf of my fellow colleagues here from the faculty, I have to inform you about a major risk. This risk is that two to three years from now, you will start suffering from something that I like to call the early professional life crisis of an MPP student, or the MPP Early Career Professional Frustration Syndrome, MPP ECPFS. <laughs> I chose this complex name in the hope that you will simply refer to it as the Enderline Syndrome one day, and I might win the, <laughs> I might win the Nobel Prize for that. <laughs> what is this syndrome? It usually appears, as I said, after one to two years in your first jobs. Its main characteristic is that you will desperately look for some deep philosophical rationales in your jobs. The tragedy of the young MPP student is that you have spent the past two years discussing how to save the planet from climate change, how to solve the financial crisis, how, do, how to address demographic change, overall how to make this world a better place. Now you will be looking for jobs and be first excited to get them. In a ministry, you will be working on an extremely narrow dossier, in one of five narrowly defined positioned units reporting to one of five divisions reporting to one of five narrowly positioned directorate generals which report to five state secretaries. You will feel small and irrelevant. Pretty much applies to jobs in the private sector and even in NGOs where entities might be much smaller but where the narrow focus is as problematic as the question, but as, does anyone listen to what I'm saying? The MPP for professional frustration symptom will set in when you will realize all this. Not immediately, because in the beginning we'll learn a lot in your new jobs, but after one or two years, normality will set in. And unlike lawyers, MPP students have a structural weakness in dealing with continuity and normality. <laughs> Once the symptom sets in, you're likely to start to feel extremely frustrated. You will ask such questions as, do I make a difference here? Or to use the hurty wording, am I really shaping tomorrow? <laughs> Should I stay in this boring job forever? When will I finally become prime minister? Will I ever become prime minister? Should I start a PhD? <laughs> My message to you today is don't panic, there is hope. While I can't promise to you, to you that you will become prime minister, 
I can promise to you that the MPP ECPFS won't last, or the Enderline syndrome, won't last for long. <laughs> because there is a ter therapy, and that therapy involves three elements, which I would like to take, which I would like you to take with you. When the syndrome sets in, you will need your beliefs, your brains, and your boss. I call this the triple B therapy, <laughs> which is appropriate. Today, you rightly feel as triple A, but once the symptom sets in, you will feel like triple B. <laughs> Obviously, triple B is not a disaster rating. There's also triple C, <laughs> which is the current rating of Greece, by the way. And there is default. But back to therapy. <laughs> you will need the first B, beliefs, to be able to be sure you are in the right place, even at times at which you don't feel comfortable. In professional life, people often do things to make you doubt your work, your qualifications, your performance. You need beliefs to stay put. The problem of the MPP student is the opportunity costs of all the jobs you don't have. You might even like your current job, but realize that this job prevents you from all the other jobs for which you would feel so qualified. So you need beliefs to understand which of the infinite number of possible jobs is the right one. The second element you need is your brain, because beliefs alone can make you forget to be rational. Too many people stayed in boring and dead-end jobs because they listened too strongly to their beliefs, but didn't use their brains. You need to mobilize both pillars and cross-check them. President Trichet can tell you about the uh, uh, easiness to combine two pillars in a single reasoning and to cross-check. Keep your beliefs, but also keep your brains. Finally, and this is often forgotten, you need the third B, your boss. I say this because when you will now go out and look for jobs, you should check out your bosses. They're very different types of bosses, and depending on who they are and how they behave, overcoming the syndrome will be less or more, or will be more or less easy. There are four basic types of bosses. Number one, the choleric dictator, who seems not to care about you. This type is actually not the worst because it will teach you to accept hierarchy while developing a healthy degree of resistance. Since you now you cannot count on your boss, you will become more strategic yourselves. The second type is the mother or father boss. This type can be okay, but it is usually quite dangerous. The father or mother boss usually gives you a great start in your job. You will feel extremely well, but later on get frustrated by the paternalistic relationship, which could exacerbate the MPP syndrome. Number three, the coach. This is the best type, a boss who still remembers being like you at your age and who wants you to follow her or him as soon as possible. Such a boss will know about the Enderline or MPP or MPP, EC, I forgot the rest, syndrome, and help you to overcome it. Look for that type of boss. Finally, there's the cynic. This type of boss usually didn't rise quickly or far enough in his or her career and will spend his or her time to tell you about the silliness of professional life and frustrate you from day one. This profile is the most dangerous one. So my recommendation is to you, when the syndrome sets in, don't forget to apply the triple B therapy, mobilize your beliefs, your brains, and mobilize your boss. Then everything will be all right and you will be great Herty alumni. I would like to end with an anecdote from my own moment of that kind. The anecdote quit fits nicely because I was working at the European Central Bank. I was in my late 20s and a young professional desperately looking for some kind of sense. Jean-Claude was not yet president. He came a month before I left. And pretty much at that time, the following thing happened. I drafted together with three colleagues a memo. That memo was on an institutional issue, nothing related to core monetary policy, but it put into question, and I cannot tell you how, the position of one country, I cannot tell you which. The governor of the central bank of that country wrote as a reaction to our memo a letter to the president of the European Central Bank. That letter stated the following. My concern, however, is the tone of what you call a comprehensive background information. I consider that Annex 1, the document I had worked, for, uh, worked on with two students, with two other, not students, fellows, is an outrageous pamphlet against a founding member of the European Union using innuendo and slander in a way that is unacceptable. I have been compelled to share this defamatory attack with the highest political authorities of my country. 
the serene atmosphere of consensual decision-making is clearly at stake. Anonymous bureaucrats who use these methods stemming from another political world of the remote past cannot continue to serve a European institution. So there I was. <laughs> the anonymous bureaucrat that could not continue to serve a European institution. I can assure you I didn't leave the ECB for that reason. Because my belief told me I was right. I had a boss who told me, you are right. But the way he presented this was the following. He sat down with us and said, anonymous bureaucrats is not an insult. Academics would have been an insult. <laughs> that moment I activated my brain and said, I am in a building in which being a bureaucrat is valued more than being an academic. And I wanted to become an academic, to share those wonderful moments with you, to have triple A students rather than triple B banks, and to hand out wonderful degrees to a perfect class of 2012. So when the Enderline syndrome sets in, apply the triple B strategy to re become triple A students, and now we come to graduation. Helmut, please come on the, on the stage. <laughs>